All right, welcome back to Tribility Performance Clinic, guys. Tonight, what we're gonna be going over is how to prep the wrist, forearm, and elbow. This is gonna be great for movements such as front rack position, front squats, obviously, thrusters, handstand walks, handstand push-ups against the wall, even getting into your overhead squat position or snatch position is gonna require some decent range of motion through the wrists. Our common problem sites in the wrist are either gonna be on the outside of the wrist here or just simply through the front of the wrist. What we've done in the past for a lot of folks is warmed up the wrist either in flexion or extension. But it's important for us to realize that the muscles of the forearm and the elbow when it comes into actual functional compound movements is not going to be as simple as flexion or extension only but it's a compound, meaning it's got rotation involved, or better yet, supination and pronation, along with flexion and extension of the wrist. So what we're gonna do is just a real simple prep using the floor. I'm gonna come into this position here. I'm gonna place my hands straight forward to begin with. This is going to change, but to begin, I'm gonna lock out my elbow on both sides, and from here, all I wanna do is drive my elbows forward, which in this case would be in that direction. Crank them forward as much as possible, keeping your fingers pinned to the floor, and then crank the elbows backward as much as possible, all the while trying to lock your elbows out. We're gonna go back and forth, just corkscrewing in and out of this position. You may vary how wide you go, you may vary how narrow you go. But the cooler part is simply going to be how to place your hands. So the more I rotate in, you're gonna notice I can't get into what we call supination, which is the forearm turning upwards, I can't get into supination not as nearly as much as I could before. So that locks that out and I'm gonna feel a lot more torque along the outside here. And you can continue, depending on your range, to walk that all the way around and try and crank here and then crank back. You notice I'm kind of froze here. I don't have much more range to buy than this. In the opposite direction, I could go fingertips out and now we can drive elbows more forward again and start to crank elbows more around. Here I'm gonna to start to feel more through the front or the anterior portion of the forearm. If I get fingertips way back, you've seen a lot of people do in this position, but what about with the corkscrew effect? And even better yet, if I rigged up something like a band, and this band is, is not nearly wide enough, what I'd actually wanna use is a big, wide band like this to cover more skin area for more fascial stretch. Also, I can use a voodoo floss here, which is fantastic as well. But imagine if I've got a voodoo floss or a wider band and I'm doing the same thing. Or I twist this up a couple times to where now I've got more fascial shearing. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but if I've twisted this a few times or I have a nice big wide band, it's gonna trap my skin like an old snake bite we used to get when we were kids, meaning from your cousins or your brothers and twist back and forth. So now I've got the shearing fascial effect taking place with the forearm and the wrist as well. And this you can work all the way up the chain. So again, instead of just flexion and extension, sorry, flexion and extension movement patterns with or without the band, throw the band in there, but now drive supination and pronation movement patterns for all your wrist and forearm elbow preps. Try that out in the next workout, you guys, and stay tuned for the coming up video. Thanks.